Well, he was back to the prairie, but still very far from home. What would he do now? It was dark, and Grounder was tired, but too keyed up to sleep. He looked around, trying to decide what to do. Uh-oh, what was that? Did something move in the shadows over there? <sighs> it's just Jackrabbit, huddled by some rocks, perking his ears up, probably wondering what Grounder was. The moon emerged from behind some clouds, bathing the prairie in a bluish glow. Grounder decided to trek onward as carefully as he could. Walking seemed to help him think at least, and he could see surprisingly well in the moonlight. Grounder had been so excited to start a new life in the forest, and he just didn't seem to fit in there. Maybe he could have tried harder, but he also hadn't realized how crowded it would be and how damp compared to the prairie. He certainly felt better having returned to a familiar environment, but he was so sure he wanted to go home. Oh, all he felt like doing was walking onward, yet he also felt exposed, not being in any kind of burrow at this hour. His eyes were playing tricks on him. There seemed to be movement in the shadows all around, and who knows what dangers lurking up ahead. Grounder still felt the urge to get somewhere, so he simply kept walking as he watched and listened. Grounder missed his family. He never really got to know his father. Among Richardson's ground squirrels, it's just the mother who raises the litter. His mother. She'd always been there for him when he was little. The nest had been so cozy, and he never went hungry. He and his sisters used to cuddle together for hours and hours. They went through a lot together. Storms, predators, extreme heat, finding enough food and water. Mother had kept them from hawks, weasels, you name it. She was always on the watch, clear with her signals and had a few tricks up her sleeves too. Like when she convinced Snake she was bigger than she actually was. What were they all up to now? Did they worry about Grounder? He had often been frustrated with their continual bickering, but he hadn't meant to abandon them. He just needed to find his own space. He hoped they were all okay. And maybe they'd meet again. <gasps> All of a sudden, there was a whoosh of water from around the bend, and the stick Grounder was walking on moved. He was floating. He'd been so caught up in memories, he hadn't even realized he was trucking across a dry creek bed. There must have been heavy rains upstream, and the gulch was now flowing with water, carrying Grounder with it. <gasps> Luckily, he'd been on a large stick, but really, he was no sailor. Grounder hung for dear life. Side branches kept the stick from turning much and gave him extra paw holds, at least. What a rush of water tumbling over and around rocks. It seemed to be getting deeper. But it also seemed to be slowing down. He'd come to a bit of a pool and the stick drifted to the side bank onto a sandbar. Ah. <sighs> What a relief. Grounder stepped gingerly off his stick onto the bank and climbed up out of the gully. The moon was still shining bright as ever. The landscape was stunning. Rolling hills to the horizon and beyond. Stars twinkling above. And behind him, there appeared to be some giant flowers or trees or something, unlike anything he'd seen before. They were rather strange, really, but maybe he would get a better look at them in the morning. The crickets 
for singing their full chorus tonight. Rounder was weary from the flash flood and ready. Oh, something was running towards Grounder, and he huddled under a bush just as Jackrabbit sprinted past with Coyote and Hopper. So he hoped Jackrabbit got away. Such was life on the prairie for a Richardson's ground squirrel. Sublime beauty one moment, abject terror the next. When the coast was clear, Grounder walked until he could walk no more, then curled between some large rocks for shelter. He would figure things out in the morning. All he could do now was fall asleep.